Greetings, everyone. Are you familiar with the 80% NEC rule? Let's dig into its meaning and significance. According to this rule, circuit breakers are typically designed to handle approximately 80% of their total amperage capacity. The purpose of this is to provide a safety margin and to avoid nuisance tripping. However, selecting an overrated overcurrent device will significantly increase project costs. Welcome, everyone, to the Codesultant channel. In this video, we will explore the rules outlined by the NEC regarding the sizing of overcurrent protective devices. This topic is often confusing due to the relationship between the NEC's percentage loading allowance and the design of circuit breakers. Let's delve into both aspects in detail and gain a better understanding. The purpose of the NEC is to safeguard lives, protect property, and promote electrical safety through comprehensive and up-to-date guidelines for electrical installations. Let's refer to the National Electrical Code for the proper sizing of overcurrent devices, and let's confirm that these 80% NEC rules exist. Once again, the purpose of the 80% rule is to ensure that circuits operate within a safe range, accounting for the capacities of all the components within the circuit. It suggests that circuits should not be loaded beyond 80% of their rated capacity. This is why, after calculating the total current or demand current, some practitioners multiply it by 125%. But why 125%? It is the inverse of 80%. Let's start with the basic rules for sizing the branch circuits or feeder conductors. Sections 210.19A1A and 215.2A1A have the same language and state that, where a branch circuit and feeder supply continuous loads or any combination of continuous and non-continuous loads, the minimum branch circuits or feeder conductor size shall have an ampacity not less than the non-continuous load plus 125% of the continuous load. The code tells us that a continuous load is a load where the maximum current is expected to continue for 3 hours or more. For many loads, this will be a very subjective effort at load analysis. Our National Electrical Code determines some loads that are considered continuous loads. These are Storage type water heaters that have a capacity of 450 liters, 120 gallons, or less, as specified in section 422.13, fixed electric space heating equipment and motors, as specified in section 424.3, fixed outdoor electric de-icing and snow melting equipment, as specified in section 426.4, fixed electric heating equipment for pipelines and vessels, as specified in section 427.4, branch circuits that supply signs shall be rated by 600.5 b1 or b2 as specified in section 600.5 electric vehicle charging loads as specified in section 625.41 going back to sections 210.19 a1a and 215.2 a1a the intention behind this rule is to guarantee that the circuit's ampacity is adequate to handle the continuous load while staying within 80% of the branch circuit's rating after subtracting the non-continuous load. It is worth emphasizing that the rule also takes into account the interaction between the wire and its surroundings. Adjustment factors for ambient heat or mutual conductor heating should be taken into consideration when determining the resulting ampacity. However, it is crucial to ensure that the resulting ampacity remains equal to or greater than the load regardless of whether it is continuous or not. Let's now explore the regulations outlined in the code regarding overcurrent protection. By following sections 210.20a and 215.3, you can make sure that the overcurrent device can handle at least 125% of the continuous load plus the non-continuous load when branch circuits and feeders supply continuous loads or a mix of continuous and non-continuous loads. These code sections indicate that the overcurrent protection for branch circuits and feeders should be sized to accommodate the non-continuous load along with an additional 125% of the continuous load. Essentially, the breaker or overcurrent device requires an additional 25% capacity to allow for headroom in handling the continuous load. Consequently, this necessitates the use of a larger and potentially more expensive breaker. It is important to note that the 80% rule requirement applies only to continuous loads. Let's have an example. Determine the conductor and overcurrent protective device of a circuit consisting of a 100 ampere continuous load and 25 ampere non-continuous loads. The correction and adjustment factors are 100%. To start the load calculation, we need to analyze each load in a system and classify them as continuous or non-continuous. Referring to 210.20a, we note that the 125% factor applies only to continuous loads. The equation for calculating the load current, 
which will guide the selection of conductors and subsequently the OCPD, is as follows. Solution. To size the conductor and overcurrent protective device, this is the sum of the non-continuous load plus 125% of the continuous load. Therefore, 25 amperes plus 100 amperes multiplied by 125%, the total will be 150 amperes. Article 310 of the NEC provides guidelines for conductor selection. Specifically, we refer to Table 310.16 of NEC 2023. Since we have calculated a load current, regardless of whether it is based on an 80% continuous load, we find that the total current exceeds 100 amperes. As per Section 110.14C1B Equipment Terminal Rating, we will base our conductor size selection on the 75 degrees Celsius column of Table 310.16. Consequently, the appropriate conductor size is determined to be 1 aught AWG for overcurrent protection. We can consult Table 240.6a, which indicates a suitable device rating of 150 amperes. What is the reasoning behind the code's requirement of an 80% loading for conductors, particularly for overcurrent protective devices? While circuit breakers are designed to handle 100% of their rated current, the National Electric Code specifies an 80% application when serving continuous loads. Circuit breakers are typically installed within enclosures that have limited heat dissipation compared to open environments. To ensure safe operation, a heat rise test is conducted to determine the maximum current that the breaker can carry without exceeding the permissible temperature rise in any part. This means that circuit breakers are rated for both conventional free air thermal current and conventional enclosed thermal current. The distinction between these ratings affects the circuit breaker's operational current rating. The NEC recognizes that overcurrent protective devices can be affected by the heat generated within a system. Therefore, it establishes the concept of continuous loads and imposes the 80% limitation to account for potential heat-related effects when sizing circuit breakers. It's important to note that this limitation does not imply that the circuit breaker is only capable of functioning at 80% of its rating. Instead, it is an application restriction imposed by the NEC to ensure that the continuous load does not exceed 80% of the circuit breaker's rating. In cases where circuit breakers solely supply non-continuous loads, the NEC rule does not impose this limitation, allowing the circuit breaker to be sized at 100% of its current rating. Like many rules, exceptions exist within the electrical code. In sections 210.19A1A, 215.2A1A, 210.20a and 215.3 there is an exception that says where the assembly including the overcurrent devices protecting the branch circuit is listed for operation at 100 percent of its rating the ampere rating of the overcurrent device shall be permitted to be not less than the sum of the continuous load plus the non-continuous load this exception means that when a circuit breaker is specifically listed for operation at 100 percent of its rating the additional 25 percent requirement no longer applies Instead, the device simply needs to be capable of handling the total of the continuous load and the non-continuous load. Many circuit breaker manufacturers have conducted the necessary testing and obtained UL certifications for their products, allowing them to advertise as UL listed 100% rated. This signifies that the equipment has undergone additional testing to ensure its ability to handle the additional heat rise associated with operating at 100% of its rating. A 100% rated circuit breaker, along with the associated end-use equipment, has been tested to verify that the increased heat generated under continuous loading conditions can be safely dissipated. Other equipment specifications are also influenced by the need to dissipate the heat generated during 100% rated testing. Let's go back to the previous example. Determine the conductor and overcurrent protective device of a circuit consisting of a 100 amperes continuous load and 25 amperes non-continuous loads. The correction and adjustment factors are 100%. Since we will be using an overcurrent protecting device listed for operation at 100% of its rating, therefore to size the conductor and overcurrent protective device, this is the sum of the non-continuous load plus the continuous load. Therefore, 25 amperes plus 100 amperes, the total will be 125 amperes. Since the total current exceeds 100 amperes, we will still base our conductor size selection on the 75 degrees Celsius column of Table 310.16. Consequently, the appropriate conductor size is determined to be 1 AWG for overcurrent protection, a suitable device rating of 125 amperes. If the temperature at the circuit breaker's wiring terminals exceeds 50 degrees Celsius during 100% rated testing, UL 489 mandates the use of 90 degrees Celsius insulated wire. 
sized at 75 degrees Celsius ampacity, and requires the manufacturer to mark the circuit breaker accordingly. UL 489 also outlines the minimum enclosure size and venting requirements, if necessary, for effective heat dissipation. It's important to note that a circuit breaker that has successfully passed these additional tests is still not listed for continuous loading at 100% of its rating unless explicitly marked as such by the manufacturer. While opting for a 100% rated circuit breaker may seem like the best choice, it is not always the case. It is crucial to assess whether the load will be continuous or non-continuous. If the load is non-continuous, there is no requirement to provide 125% protection, and the circuit breaker can be selected to meet 100% of the load. In such situations, the 80% rated circuit breaker may be the more suitable option. For continuous loads, it is necessary to determine the load current for each branch circuit to calculate the appropriate ampere rating for the circuit breaker. This involves using either 100% of the load current for 100% rated circuit breakers or 125% of the load current for 80% rated circuit breakers. In many cases, selecting a 100% rated circuit breaker eliminates the need to upgrade to a larger frame size circuit breaker and conductor size will be smaller. Hence, 100% rated circuit breaker the most cost-effective choice. In summary, the 80% rule specified in the NEC applies only in specific scenarios. If the load is purely non-continuous, the 80% rule does not apply. When the load consists of a combination of non-continuous and continuous components, the determination of overcurrent protective devices and conductors follows the 100% for non-continuous loads and 125% for continuous loads rule excluding the application of the 80% rule. The 80% rule is only applicable when the load is entirely continuous. However, there are exceptions if a 100% rated overcurrent protective device is used, in which case the 80% rule does not apply. It's important to note that the purpose of the 80% rule for circuit breakers is to mitigate the impact of heat in the system when the load is continuous. Thank you all for watching.